Hello! Welcome to all guys sitting in front of their screens all over the world to participate in the Maritime Education and Training course of the Shanghai Maritime University. And I'd like to uh, express my great thanks to the colleagues from the SMU, Professor Jin and Jing Ming, who prepared this workshop so excellently. Yeah, my name is Knut Benedikt. I'm with the Hochschule Wismar. This is the University of Applied Sciences, specifically the Department of Maritime Studies in Rostock, Warnemünde. And I'm the head of the Institute for Innovative Ship Simulation and Maritime Systems. And I'm very honored that I was selected to make a presentation here and I've chosen the digital twins as key maritime technology innovations for maritime education training and for operation of the ships, specifically intelligent ships. Yeah, next, a short introduction. Um, as I said, I'm from Rostock, Warnemünde, located at the Baltic Sea in Germany. Very nice beaches, as you can see here. This is the river mouse to the river Varno. And here is uh, located our campus, specifically the Maritime Sim uh, Simulation Center. Um, we are do any kind of courses, maritime for ship officer education to the highest level, and also commercial courses. Um, and we are very proud that we have been the host of the conferences 2008, the IMSF, International Marine Simulator Forum, and 2012, the INSLAC has been held in our campus here in Rostock, Warnemünde. Yeah, maybe a short introduction. Um, I started lecturing already in 1978 when I was a, a senior lecturer specifically for ship theory and uh, then I was awarded to be a professor of ship theory, theory uh, and I started lecturing with res research in ship's dynamic and traffic simulation. I have been proud to be the uh, head of the simulation center Warnemünde. Um, I'm the director of the Institute of Ship Simulation and I was also honored to be the chairman of the INSLAC and member of the IMLA steering committee in 2012-18. to 18. Um, Yeah, this was a transformation in my wife, in my life, not my wife. <laughs> um, because uh, I started as a user of analog models, because when I started lecturing, there were no digital models uh, at stake. And we had a lot of manual calculation at the time. And now I'm one of the first users of digital twins and specifically with, in our simulators and beyond for the fast time simulation I will talk about a little bit later. Okay. Um, the first uh, uh, I would like to give is the content overview. I will first give uh, definitions about digital twins and simulation. Then the development area where we will use this uh, uh, kind of uh, technology. And then I will be followed by samples for the application of uh, this uh, technology for three areas. Uh, stability of ships, ship safety, and maneuvering. And then there will be some conclusions. And if you are really in a good shape at the end of my presentation, I will even dare to give a philosophic aspect of simulation. So it's sort of dessert at the end. Yeah, definition of digital twins. I looked nowadays into wiki. And they told me it's a digital replica of living or non-living uh, living physical entities. They represent physical assets as a physical twin, but also processes, systems, even including people forming a human machine interface system. And it can be used for various purposes. 
So um, what I was, would like to stress is the dynamics of how a device operates. This is very important specifically for ship motion. And what I was want to highlight is there's a link between digital twins. This is an element of simulations. So I will bring both of them together. Because definition of simulation is the representation of a real process. It sounds like what we just talked about or systems by means of substitutes. That means models in order to create suitable, uh, acceptable process characteristics and properties in represent representative scenarios, because normally simulation is not working for the entire world. If we really look deeper in this uh, uh, definition, then processes, representation for dynamic, time-dependent dependent processes, or it could be static, statistical, physical, technical, biological, and so on. By means of substitute models and data. Ah, now it goes to the digital twins. If it's digital, because when I started, simulation was meant analog, an analog piece. So if we try to simulate the flow around the ship by magnetic field lines in electrician, electricity. Mathematical models, equation, software. And uh, this is the, uh, sorry, this is the digital twins. In order to create electrical, electronical generation, calculation, visualization, so we do a lot of uh, processes, uh, and we need process characteristics. That means parameters, plots, responses, information, data flows, Vs. So a lot of aspects goes into these properties. And it only counts for representative scenarios because we orient to, uh, orient to real life plots, situation flows, typical process elements, segments, uh, yeah, even behavior pro, uh, patterns because the question is how precise should it be? For what should the simulation be? Because this definition is so generic, so general that for the application we could use this from the Big Bang space theory uh, model to maritime ship handling. Okay, that's our professional area. <laughs> and even it works for theater drama, because also in the theater we are uh, simulating certain people, certain uh, uh, conditions, scenarios or whatsoever. So theater is also a simulator. Okay, um, so simulator components, they are based on digital twins, because these are the database and relations equations. Um, and also simulation management we need for a simulator as a simulation engine to always calculate new uh, conditions uh, to also uh, orient it at the scenario. Uh, we need exercise management and we need a user interface as input output and also for presenting the results because we want to know what the simulator has done and has achieved. Um, so, what I meant, there's a close link. Um, oh now, uh, application areas, where we do simulations. And uh, I would like to uh, have uh, split it into four areas. So, normally uh, the, the simulation started with design and development to uh, do certain constructions, productions. And science and research this was also connected to make models and others. Education and training and process management and control. And for all of these elements, there are digital twins and methods uh, relevant in all areas above for maritime. And I would like to give some samples. For instance, design and development is for ship design, offshore port and waterway design. And uh, the training is therefore for ship operation, VTS operation, or whatsoever. And a very important element is that the simulation now is being used 
also in the process management. So, for instance, ship operation, we have uh, ARPA right in the radar to make predictions. There's a past prediction. In, in VTS operations, there's a way time graph. And in production lines, they use, uh, even for, for cars, they use uh, simulation. What will happen in the next hours if one, uh, one element failed? Okay, so uh, the last part is science and research because they are the driving forces for development, new technologies, new elements. Um, yeah, there are a lot of applications. And this is what we focus on operation and also... Yeah, so I start with the first one, cargo, stability of ships, cargo handling. Um, there are digital twin elements and I would like to discuss some aspect of the database, the relationships, equations, and also the simulation systems, which are specifically represented by a cargo computer. Um, yeah, stability of ships, hydrostatic data. This was uh, uh, the first one in the old school we had manual calculations. That's when I started in 97-8. It was all done manually. So I had a lot of the stability books and the cross, the hydrostatic tables for cross curves or whatsoever to calculate and estimate the stability conditions. Um, and also on board, they had a, hell, a lot of time, a hell of time to really do all the um, calculations from one port to the next port. Now we have full digital hull data and the shipyard calculates all the cross curves with a finger snip from these uh, hull data from these digital files for a cargo computer. Relationships, yeah, some of you may remember some of the aspects. Uh, there are equations for instance for the uprighting lever GZ here for the, uh, creating the moment to bring the ship up again. Here's a GZ curve and even some weather criterion relationships with respect to these uh, two areas. Do you know about that? I don't want to go in detail. And um, then um, why we have computers? This will be the next part. Old conventional manual calculation costs hours. So uh, I remember the old captains at that time, they told me that they spend nearly uh, the whole time of a voyage along the uh, European ports, hopping from one port to the next, and they always were calculating the next conditions. So they had a, a hell of time. Um, and um, what is uh, how we are using it for better planning? planning ahead and monitoring for higher efficiency so for and safety. Um, yeah, here's a sample for such a computer program. I hope it will work. Um, yeah, I will show it. Um, here is the uh, interface of a cargo computer and my colleague has uh, uh, spent some minutes to show us some details. So, and what he was showing is uh, the loading procedure for the uh, containers on board. So, it's a, a click, a mouse click, uh, that you can have all the containers under deck and then uh, later on all the, all the containers uh, on deck. And then in a finger snip, you got the information, oh, the GM is even negative. This won't work. So we need to have maybe some ballast or whatsoever. Uh, and uh, so uh, he, he did some ballast uh, calculations. Also the fuel oil will be implemented. And okay, the GM is all a little bit better. Then here, here is the, the, the ballast. So only with mouse and so on, you got the information about the ballast condition. And when this is finished, uh, then you got the f immediate overview about the stability and now we see it's an acceptable GM. This is for the basic part, but there are also additional parts. Uh, this is an extra for grounding to calculate the forces uh, to bring the ship up. 
Finally, we have also an element for what you see here, trim optimization to get the, the minimum consumption uh, for this part. Okay, and now I want to stress another uh, aspect in stability, avoidance of resonance in heavy weather. Um, so we have made already starting in the 90s a specific software for uh, calculating roll resonance and um, pitch resonance and other uh, dangerous uh, situations. And uh, it's based on the digital stability data and also some extra weather information and so forth. It turned out to be excellent for students' education to understand and make a lot of variants uh, how it works and uh, also for assistance on board because many of the students who have worked with the software later on they, they bought it for their company. And I will demonstrate, give an example. Then you see here we have a very well-known movie. It's about the ship rolling accident of a cruise liner. So you see here in heavy weather and uh, the passengers on board of the vessel, they had a tough time, as you see here. Uh, so the ship was rolling so heavily that uh, they destroyed a lot of uh, uh, furniture and also the people, they were uh, hurt by these uh, conditions. Okay, so uh, I like to... Okay. Uh, the roll time period could be immediately seen here by about 20 seconds, because that is important. Here are the other wave data we had uh, in that, uh, given in that uh, movie and from the weather reports. And then we see the analysis in our arrow uh, overview. What we see is the speed vector is in the center of the parameter rolling resonance. So it would be better with the ship to go in another course or to change the speed to get out of these dangerous areas. So um, the ship was not in synchronous. It was, as the accident report said, it was in parameter rolling conditions. And even more uh, resonance for rolling and for pitching, which is uh, uh, not good. So it's coupled resonance cases. And um, there also are potential uh, effects of non-linear uh, uprighting lever curves, but I don't want to go in detail here. Okay, next one is uh, the summary. So what we see is uh, it's a holistic approach because the data which were created during the design phase for the stability they go into a digital model, into a digital twin, and they only will be checked, maybe amended after shipyard trials, inclining tests. And then, this is great, to be used for the entire uh, ship lifetime, both for maritime education and training in the university, but it's a so handy computer that you also could do the training uh, on board and specifically for onboard ship operation to pre-plan loading uh, conditions and to check it and so forth. Even if it's not 100% perfect, we all know about that. You make a cargo calculation and then afterwards you look to the loading scale and say, oh, mm -hmm, it's not that precise as I thought. But it shows the tendency, correct tendency. This is the most important part in simulation. Oh, is it also the case for maneuvering? This will be our next uh, chapter. Digital twins, sample two, maneuvering of ships. The content I would like to talk about is uh, simulation in ship design, what we have for elements, database, relationships, and then the question is, is there a link from design to operation? Simulation for training and even for operation on board. And then there are some simulation systems 
And uh, specifically, uh, I would like to talk more in detail about fast time simulation because this turned out to be very effective as a new element for training and also for operation of ships. Yeah, ship design. Uh, the initial ship design nowadays uh, will reveal a, a mesh for the uh, positions of, uh, of a hull, maybe 5,000, 6,000 data you have to represent the ship's hull. Uh, from this, uh, there will be a digital twin and also a math model will be made. Um, for instance, for CFD calculations, like this, that means by computational fluid dynamics, the pressure around the hull will be computed to get the info afterwards the forces for resistance and the transverse forces for steering. Alternatively, you could also make model tests, which are very time consuming and uh, very costly. By the way, also such a con uh, calculation for CFD may take a week or so for such a... So it's not for ship handling simulation, it's more for uh, calculating the forces. And this normally goes also in a ship, da uh, ship database. These are the equation of motion, for instance. Um, normally, the math model needs the parameters for the forces, like here on this side. So they will be represented by dimensionless uh, coefficients or parameters. Um, and the future will be, and we started already with it, that we have a artificial uh, intelligence uh, in place uh, as a neural network to represent the relationship in such an equation, for instance. So this is quite new and I will show where we are using this. Then from these models we start maneuvering. Normally during the design phase there will be uh, comparisons with the results with the IMO standards for maneuvers. They are for turning circles, stopping distance. You have to comply with these standards. And then it will be verified. Uh, and if it's not uh, suitable then, or acceptable, then you have to change the design. But finally, there will be a decision. OK, this is now the case. And this goes into shipbuilding, construction, production of the vessel. Yeah, and when the ship is being built, there will be some shipyard trials to measure what the real ship motion are. Maybe they, they learn something for the next phase, but we need these trials for ship operation. This is the next part. So from here, it goes into ship operation. And hopefully, there will be, at least in future, a better link between ship design, construction, and the ship operation. Uh, and I will tell why. Normally, and in the old days, from the shipyard trials, we got our maneuvering documents, pilot card, wheelhouse poster, maneuvering booklet, and this was being used for decision for ship maneuvering, for conning. Uh, at least when I started, we only had this available. No computers, no simulators yet at that time. So we looked into this book and learned, okay, the turning circle of this ship is like this, so take that into consideration. Later on, we started to make digital twins. Unfortunately, they don't rely on that what they already had in, in the design phase because this is proprietary. They don't like to give that away. And then we make maneuvering simulators out of that, uh, uh, specifically for ship handling training, test studies like port studies or whatsoever. And the new thing is because this is so slow, uh, normal real time simulators are too slow, they are not helpful on board. So they tried it, but the uh, officers were not really liking this one. So we set out to develop a new thing, fast time maneuvering simulation for onboard training and decision support. So prediction for maneuvering, planning, monitoring and control. So this is going to replace these ship maneuvering 
um, document. Nobody will look on that anymore if you have this fast time available. Um, and what we uh, try to establish a full software system, and we called it Salmon, to have a name. And I will explain what Salmon means and what it helps. So, some details for these new Salmon and some buzzwords. The first one is Rapid. Rapid Advanced Prediction and Interface Technology. This combines, on one hand, extreme fast time simulation, so we achieve to calculate in one second computing time up to 24 minutes ahead prediction. So we know what happens in the next 24 seconds. And this rus runs in a cycle, so if you change something, then it immediately shows the different results. And there's a smart interface to allow for the involvement of humans, professionals. This is the difference to other methods of fast time simulation. Uh, we can manually steer that vessel even in that fast time simulation, so we made a trick out of that, for even complex maneuvers for port arrival or departure and others. And from, by, based on this technology, we developed the summon. This means simulation augmented maneuvering for maneuvering design, that means concept, maneuvering plans, monitoring and conning. So it's a set of software mod modules for design and planning, trial and training, monitoring and conning uh, with multiple predictions and recording and predictive replay. So what we learned in that, uh, I don't know, five years we have it now, um, they can improve a lot the effectiveness of training. Lecturing, training uh, drastically. And we are fully sure that this will improve the ship handling on board, uh, increasing safety, reducing fuel consumption and emissions. And the best thing is, it's on a small, tiny laptop. You can have it anywhere. Yeah, what is the potential? So what, what we can we look at? And I try to uh, explain the process of uh, maneuvering and ship handling operation. It is based, it's a, what we know, it, it's a human-centered and still highly manual process. Based on the human ability, and uh, this ability will be, how to say, improved by lecturing to improve the knowledge on one hand, but by ship handling training to improve the skills also. And there are also ship equipment and support to support the humans during this process. First, you need to have a really good ship, which is highly maneuverable. Uh, and then you have some technical support by uh, Actis, uh, Radar, AIS. Uh, and there are even some, how to say, very simplified uh, simulations or predictions like APA, trial functions, pass prediction, and others. So they are already available. But what we tried is, um, we tried to help with this uh, uh, rapid tool. Um, we tried to support these, this process with smart interfaces. And um, I will um, give some samples for it. So on the left side, I will arrange the benefits for lecturing and simulator training. So what there's also a fast and detailed demonstrations of ship's dynamics. You don't have to wait for half an hour until your ship in a real-time simulator have made a turning circle or longer. Um, extreme effective demonstration of complex maneuver because you can really in a finger snip find out what if, if I do that, what happens? Uh, and the trainee can use these laptop computers for their individual training, planning for simulator exercises. And what we learned is they don't fail afterwards. Um, and then it's a hands-on experience for, for the bridge hand, use of bridge handles. We have also on the, on the laptop, we have an, uh, how to say, a computer interface. Uh, but if you use, use the real handles, it pays off. 
And this is the most important thing, individual assessment and debriefing against your own plan. Because sometimes you have some discussions that the instructor said you should have done this and that. Um, but now the students make his own individual plan, uh, plan, specifically if the trainees are captains, they make their plan and afterwards you say you failed, you didn't stick to your intentions. Okay, this is onshore, uh, maybe also on board. You can use it for training on board. And here uh, now, sorry, this was wrong. Now the benefits for operation on board ships. So we have a dynamic wheelhouse poster. You are not limited to only uh, the data for hard rudder turning circle with full ahead, stopping only with the engine and whatsoever. Um, so you can do any of the conditions. Then you can do a full voyage plan. And this voyage plan is not pure guessing, it's simulated proven, so to say. And then you use the prediction for conning with multiple uh, predictions methods. Uh, you can have afterwards an assessment by using the recordings by voyage data recorder or others. And uh, you, uh, for the cruise ships, for instance, they have already huge fleet operation center. You can both have the software on board and ashore. And last but not least, it's a ship specific software. So it's not any ship, it is your ship. So you can use your ship. In simulators, you normally do a more a general uh, training for ship handling with, I don't know, one cargo ship, one, uh, one uh, tanker or whatever. But now the model can be tailored to your ship and very much close to the ship behavior. Okay, uh, next part. <clears throat> Who developed this, this type? Um, this is a unique software system and it was developed in our institute, so we are very proud on that. And um, it is, uh, for the time being, it's naturally in our simulation center, we were the first. And it's used in the WMU in Malmö, in the cruise center, simulator uh, center of AIDA cruises, which went afterwards into the CSMART training center. CSMART is the central training center uh, in, in, in the Netherlands. It's for the entire carnival Corporation, so they bring all their ships officers and they make an excellent training. But unfortunately, this center has been closed now because of the shutdown Corona. And so we keep our fingers crossed that this situation will be over soon. Uh, uh, in the name of all sailors on board and all those guys who are supporting them from shore. So I hope you are with me. And initial tests are ongoing on board ferries, so we spread out to the shipborne side now. Uh, this is the Scandlines ferry. Yeah, okay. And this is me in my small tiny dinghy. This is where I love my vacation. And this year, maybe I was the only one who could uh, spend uh, a, sh a vacation on a ship. <laughs> Okay, now um, how to use the salmon. So <laughs> this is uh, me and this is in the CSMART training center where we, I have excellent conditions for teaching. So there's on one hand a huge touchscreen computer for the salmon system and you just see a, a maneuvering plan which a, a trainee has made and you see he has a hard time because it was very unusual conditions uh, strong wind, current and others, so the, he could not even steer the ship properly. And then it's another screen of the same time only for uh, lecturing and the PowerPoint presentations. And most important, the, there are 12 stations available for, these, for the trainees, so they can do their own tests, checks, maneuvering plans and whatsoever. And in the AIDA simulator we have made the experiences that always when they had a good plan before, so they did not fail anymore in the exercises. This saved a lot of time. That's why um, 
we made the following as I described. Uh, from conventional, we switched over to the innovative summer. It represents the same information condensed in a ship dynamic model as a digital twin. Same quality as a full mission simulator because we are using the same data files and parameters. So it's identical. We can use it, but much more faster on a laptop, on a touch screen, not in real time, much more faster. Uh, so you go with that on a bridge or you do it on this uh, uh, touch screen or maybe on the tiny uh, tablet computer. And uh, so this is standalone on a laptop and you can interface these software to the bridge. Uh, then you have the opportunity to use the bridge handle as input and you see immediately the results what will happen. Okay, and uh, so here you see instead of fixed data for a turning circle, you immediately have the turning circle under wind impact. This is great. And this means we have a dynamic wheelhouse poster with high potential of use both for lecturing, simulated training and also on board. Um, this is the interface of the fast time simulation software. And uh, what you see here is on the right side there's the interface panel for the handles, engine order telegraph. You see it's two engine orders, it's a twin screw vessel. You have the rudders, uh, two rudders and two thrusters. Uh, no, not two, it's more. It's uh, uh, two, yeah, two thrusters at the bow and also two thrusters at the stern. It's a passenger vessel. And uh, uh, we have set just the, the um, engine order is set to 30%, 36 uh, revolutions. And the ship is moving now with 6.2 knots. And you see these shapes here, and they represent every shape as a position at after one minute. We can do blow it up up to 24 minutes. Now it's adjusted to 10 minutes. So if I use uh, now the uh, engine to maybe 70%, uh, this is about 60 knots of the ship. Then you see, okay, these are the positions. And if you want to know what the rudder, uh, what the rudder effect is, turning circle, then you see five degrees, 10 degrees, and so forth, 15 degrees. And this is a hard rudder turning circle. This is what you have in your maneuvering booklet or a wheelhouse poster. And it's only measured for full ahead. So the question is always, is it turning circle different for other uh, speeds? And if you see, okay, this is full ahead, the turning circle doesn't change so much. And if you go down to maybe 30%, this is six knots. No, this is 20%. This is 30% uh, uh, engine order telegraph settings. So it's six knots and this is the turning circle. If you want to have the full circle, uh, then you present uh, much more shapes. Okay, so you can do a lot of uh, trials uh, by means of this part to check it out. Uh, we could also use maybe split engines. Could we improve the, um, uh, the turning by splitting the engines, for instance? Oh, I have to desynchronize the engine. So now you see, okay, now this engine is slightly going astern and then the uh, turning circle is squeezed together. Uh, if you want to know what happens uh, if I, instead of the rudder, um, I'm using uh, the bow thruster now, and you see the difference. Um, the ship is quite, um, quite uh, fast, six knots, so the bow thruster fully is having this effect, but the difference is you see the shapes are lined up. Uh, this is the effect of bow thruster. No big swept pass. But if you go slower with that, as you see immediately, okay, the turning circle changes. So it's excellent. And if you want to go to uh, a certain position on that turning circle, then you move this kind of time slider. Then you see what is the rate of turn, speed, heading, or whatsoever at this position. And the good thing is, if you want to change the maneuver there, then you set a maneuvering point here. 
then the focus goes on this area and if you change something here, maybe the rudder or you set the bow thruster to, <coughs> to zero, then immediately you see, okay, this is um, maybe, f so this is now the next maneuver and so you can make a sort of maneuvering planning like this. And the good thing is, if you want to see the effect of wind, then you go maybe for the wind speed uh, on my tiny laptop computer, it's much more faster. But if you want to see what happens for uh, 20 knots of wind from north, then you see, okay, if the wind has just appeared when the ship is here, then it changes immediately the track of the vessel. Uh, by the way, <laughs> Um, there's a lot of mu movies I made <coughs> on YouTube. So if you only uh, enter here isms uh, as a keyword, then you get immediately onto our website and there's a lot of movies about any uh, thing I prepared and I'm just adding on new movies on whatsoever. So only print isms enter isms and then you got on our web page. Okay, so um, it goes beyond. From single maneuvering discussion it goes to a full maneuvering plan starting from here turning the ship and going astern to the jetty. This is what our ferries are doing. A complete maneuvering plan can be real. And uh, maneuvers uh, can be designed as a chain of maneuvers and then we have on top a prediction that you see what the ship will do in the next minutes while you are driving the ship. So immediately if you move the rudder then it shows okay the ship will do in that. So you can really aim into something. Uh, to, um, uh, okay this is uh, done with the maneuvering design and planning module and this is with the monitoring and control module. Okay this is the overall objective higher quality efficiency and training and more efficient and safe uh, environmental friendly maneuvers on board. This is a message. Okay, now I give you an uh, expert uh, application or sample. My name is Kasper Krüger. I've been sailing as a navigational watch officer on cruise vessels where I got involved in ship maneuvering. Of course, first in the simulator and later on board the real ships. And as I worked before with the software, I had the chance to try someone planning to prepare maneuvers beforehand and to demonstrate my maneuver strategy on board to my colleagues before conducting the maneuver. And in the following minutes, I would just like to show you how easy and how handy it is to, to design or to find a maneuvering strategy for the upcoming maneuver, which will be the arrival to the port. And this is what I'm going to show you now um, in the next minutes. In this scenario, we have a current of two knots setting to the north, north no wind at all, and we want to turn to port side and approach the pier over here by our starboard side. So what he did not say, I asked him not to talk when he is doing the job here, because then I can explain what he is doing much more faster. So he set now the current, you see immediately the ship, ship is drifting to north. So he changes the heading of the vessel to uh, ensure for a balanced drift condition, you see here with the drift angle. And then he moves the ship in f uh, close to the, uh, to the entrance of the port and uh, there he is steering the ship to be lined up with the, with the uh, course here. And, and uh, then he uh, put a next maneuvering point, then he released uh, the current because here in the, in the, uh, behind the moles there's no current anymore. And then he moves the ship to the next position where he will try to uh, turn the vessel. And uh, then the next maneuvering point. And now he can try out some options um, to be uh, excellently uh, prepared for turning the ship, uh, reducing the speed and then to go uh, astern to the jetty. Um, so first he tries it only with the rudders. So um, then you see that the ship is uh, losing speed but it's still six knots. 
So what he is uh, with, a, with uh, reducing the engine, then the steerability is not that good anymore. So finally he ends up, what you see next, is he desynchronized the engine to go with one engine ahead. So because you want to turn to port, then you see immediately that the turning is improved and the ship will be uh, very slow at this, uh, at this condition. So he's satisfied with this previous maneuver, <coughs> then he's put in a maneuvering point, and then he is uh, um, pulling the ship uh, astern. So he's going to astern now, and then he is uh, steering the ship by means of the bow thruster. Okay, I stop it now here. This is now a movie about using the Summon monitoring and conning module on our bridge simulators. So the input of the uh, handles and nav sensors goes directly into Summon. On the left side there is the Rheinmetall simulator bridge, our biggest bridge, number one. And uh, uh, here is the uh, instructor stations with a laptop. And uh, on the right side, there is the simulator from, from Bentec. We will start with this simulator using this simulator in the so-called freeze mode. That means the ship is not moving and we are only discussing some variants of maneuvers. And uh, our current situation is that we are entering here a turning basin area with uh, 3.1 knots and we want to manage to turn overboard and passing on a safe distance these boys and here the corner. So, and uh, so we will start first with uh, hard rudder, hard support, and uh, we see that with no change on the propellers and no thruster use, we will have a big swept path and we will not manage to pass the corner. What will be the next step? The next step will be uh, kick and 30% uh, on both engines and immediately you see that uh, we will manage here to pass the corner uh, but we have still a big swept pass and we have to be careful to stop the rate of turn and uh, not over swing. So what will be the next step? The next step we have is now that we are using uh, splitting the engines. Uh, we are going on minus 10% on the port engine and 30% on the starboard engine ahead and immediately you see that we are reducing rapidly the speed sweat path is going down but you don't have to miss the point when uh, you have to speed up again to pass the area here still a better maneuver already and uh, what will be the next step next step very easy uh, we are now using the thrusters we are reducing first the rudder and we are going back to our 20% on the engine and uh, we are now using the uh, thruster with 50% and immediately you see when we are using the thruster it is going better and better and you see immediately on fast time simulation how the swept path is reduced how we are changing our rate of turn and how we are going clear from the corner um, still, if I'm giving a little bit more power on the thruster, um, then we are having more clearance on the starboard and port side. This movie is now f f on our ship biggest bridge the, uh, in the Maritime Simulation Center, and the ship is now in motion. And uh, the red contour, uh, nearly in the center, this is the current position of our vessel and the black shapes are the prediction uh, in front of the ship according to the immediate uh, response to the ship uh, maneuvering handles like thrusters and rudders.
And this is interesting because it's a test. It's a result from a test with, uh, with eight navigators and they had a certain scenario to do. And we have here in green the numbers uh, or the, the results from people who do, did the maneuvers without the fast time simulation. So they make conventional preparation. And then we had uh, the yellow one, they were allowed to use the planning tool and the black ones are those who could even use the prediction on top. And what you see is the number of rudder commands, it uh, goes down. Um, sp specifically the number uh, of, uh, of uh, rudders here with 10 and 20 degrees and this is the rudder use time in percent. So this one is very much uh, safer. Here you see the uh, time history of the rudder commands. This is without fast time simulation and planning and this is with. And you see immediately these guys, they know what they do and what could be expected. So with the summon you have far less maneuvers. And this is the savings, uh, power consumption for the propellers. So the black ones had the best results, the lowest power consumption and also for the thrusters. So all in all uh, with the summon support you could uh, save money and also um, help the environment. These are the results from ferries. This is a ferry coming from Denmark going and here, here are five runs of this ferry. They turn the ship and go to this jetty. And this, by the way, this is what they planned in their NACO system, so they don't care about what they have planned. Um, and the normal route plans were, um, they are straight lines and big differences in tracks and power. So if you see the percentage, what power they used, so up to 20% differences in this part. So this could be made much more better. So potential for improvements. Uh, we made a comparison, now it's only one of these maneuvers, this one here, and here are the comparisons of the rudder, no, it's azimuth uh, controls, so of the azimuth propellers, and uh, these are the recorded data. And this is a maneuvering plan to achieve the same results, so if you are really supported by fast time simulation, then you could be uh, doing much less maneuvers. So um, the commands uh, here, they're alternating back and forth because you always need to know, okay, what the ship is doing. If I do this, the ship will do that. Ah, no, it's too strong. So like this. So the expectation is um, we should use smaller control act actions, only what is really necessary. And so smaller are the fuel consumptions. This will be investigated in other projects we are just doing. But we did another thing specifically with fuel. Because as the uh, digital models, we are using now artificial neural networks. So it's uh, artificial intelligence. And uh, what we did is uh, we, uh, we learned such a neural network how the uh, fuel consumption and the emissions are. And these are the, the time uh, histories of uh, consumption, propeller, pitch, speed, and, and so forth. And this is NOx, and this is the uh, suit uh, for the, from the engine. So what we did is that we verified our models. They were quite good. And for the future, we will have Additionally to this maneuvering plan and the total time, we will, for this maneuver, it was 23 uh, minutes about from here to there. And in future, there will be also a total of fuel consumption, CO2, NOx and others. So afterwards you can really uh, judge, okay, with this maneuver I have achieved this result, maybe I can do it better. This is the future, we are just working on that. Uh, another part what I want to show is um, multiple prediction maneuvering lines. So uh, specifically for collision avoidance, we did these investigations in an EU project, MUNIN, for 
autonomous ships. This was the first EU project on autonomous vessels. And we uh, tried to support the uh, conning the ships from the shore because there's a latency sending data back and forth. So always have to wait for the data from the ship. And if you do something, the response of the ship. So it's helpful if you have a prediction, specifically if there is a collision situation. So what we show here is, this is uh, the actual uh, position of, the, of our vessel, and this is a giveaway vessel, which is, uh, which is not um, uh, following the rules. So in this case, you have to take your own measures, and uh, there could be a crash stop, there could be a hard starboard turning, or uh, hard to port turning. I will bring it to the beginning. So the ship is moving and this ship is always getting closer. So this is the normal prediction. Uh, so it, it's changing a little bit if he is using the rudder. But this is already to be seen. This is the crash stop. So the crash stop will not help anymore. So it could only be uh, turning circle and he's just using now the rudder hard to starboard and you see okay if this ship is uh, going straight uh, continuously then this maneuver will help so this is uh, what we uh, what I wanted to show um, okay so uh, a summary for this uh, maneuvering part Maneuvering of ships is not a perfect sample for holistic simulation approach with digital twins because digital models from ship design were only used for ship design and construction. Uh, for the maritime education simulation, we have to do extra generated, uh, the, the models has to be extra generated by results from shipyard trials or by other test trials. So this is not a good simulation. There's no real link. Uh, full mission simulators are very realistic, but time consuming. And for the future, fast time simulation will be used for more efficient training and the use on board. Uh, we got a lot of appraisal during the uh, training and the cruise uh, line simulators that they all say, why don't we have these tools on board? I would wish to have it at least for the planning, maybe better for the monitoring and conning. And the last remark is, even if the simulation is not 100% perfect, the results are already very close to that, uh, but at least what you have taken benefits from is uh, if you show the correct tendency. This already helps a lot to detect errors maybe using the wrong rudder or whatsoever. So, digital twins sample three, safety of ships. And the content is, what I want to show is, digital twin elements and development discussion on the database for 3D entire ship geometry, relationships and a simulation system. Okay, so uh, for such a 3D you need from the deck plans and the equipment uh, for, for safety equipment, you need to do these uh, 3D models of the entire ship. Even engine room or bridge will be modeled. Every room, every floor in the ship will be, be modeled. And there should be also um, a physical process model for the relations and equations even for the human health model. So if there is a fire model and you have fire here, then these, how to say, you as an avatar must be hurt by, uh, by, the, by the smoke or whatsoever. Uh, if it's a realistic simulation, then you will fail. Okay, this is the idea behind. And this is the uh, sample. Okay, so... Uh, so it like, looks like this is an individual training station. So this guy is running through the ship to look for a room where a fire was reported. And uh, there are two screens. One is the overview and one is the action screen. So, and if they open this door, for instance, uh, then he goes in the next aisle. So it needs time. And this is important in a simulation. 
if you are not fast enough, then the fire will spread out and you might uh, not be successful in the future. So they talk about headsets because they all play, here's only a sample for two, it's a test trial. Normally we have up to eight to nine people forming a crew and do uh, safety measures. And here you see that this guy is uh, picking up uh, safety equipment, breathing apparatus and uh, hoses and whatsoever. And finally he is running to... I will uh, bring it a little bit uh, further uh, to see what happens. Okay, finally, if he is in the lounge and he opens the door, then um, there's a fire, so to say, and uh, you have to extinguish the fire by uh, different measures. So this is the individual training stations. Um, and I will stop it here uh, and the next part is this is now a safety center on board on the, on the bridge in our simulator and uh, here we can uh, and <coughs> these data models go also in a um, distress and, and advisory system so for decision support where you can um, where you have uh, your information about the status of the sensors, of the fires, and also you get an information what you should do next. So uh, there's another movie. Um, so this is a captain, this is a uh, navigation officer. Now a fire alarm sprangs up and uh, the, he is looking into the rooms where the fire came out. and. He, he is now informing the fire squad uh, that they go, these eight other people, they run to this area and try to extinguish the fire. If it's not... So this is the uh, commands. And then you see here uh, the panel of the uh, controls for firefighting and others and he also can release it, so you see here uh, the fire in that room. For instance. So it's highly advanced and the students like it uh, very much. Um, I will stop it here even though it's interesting. But Corona. Thank you very much. These are my details if you want to write me a mail. Thanks a lot. Um, now, this is how to say the last part of my presentation, but one extra. <laughs> uh, if, you have, if you are not really tired, then I have a philosophic aspect. Um, the, I, the question is, can thinking in our brains, can this be seen as a simulation or a simulated process? What do you think? To my understanding, it is. So yes. Thinking processes are the representation of the surroundings in a model and you have also some ideas what will happen, how they re interact. Uh, but it's, uh, I believe it's uh, analog. So it's electric processes, but it's analog. Um, so it's very advanced in human brains. I hope so. We are a, lot of, a little arrogant all. And so the question is now, why? Why the nature might have created this method? Is, it, is there any advantage of thinking? I believe so. Because thinking ahead reveals acceleration of the evolution. By replacing a material process where you try out something physically and then it fails, so it took a lot of time. But if you think before, then you can um, spend less energy. There are two samples. So low-level creatures development. Uh, in nature is a full material process because they have no brain. They do something and then they die or not. Uh, new steps require new variations, generations of creatures, genes and followed by selection. So selection is a word. Survival of the fittest. It takes time and resources. Maybe not for fruit flies because they are generating the next generation in 15 minutes, therefore it's highly used for research. And then high-level intelligent creature development, uh, <clears throat> like humans, like us. It is dominated by thinking ahead. 
with aspects of prediction and simulation. So we always say, what, what might be the next one? So we always think ahead. Proactive decision-making instead of being sorted out by an accident. Much more faster and with very small resources in contrary to the real material process. Therefore, think ahead and simulate before. But there's another aspect, the last one. What are the potential conclusions out of that? So, uh, intelligence, to my understanding, can be seen as a new state of matter. So, as material can have the conditions of being a gas or a liquid or a solid state, plasma or whatsoever, then there's a state which means this is intelligence. And uh, my view is, um, the intelligent state of matter, maybe even with including the artificial intelligence, and its development will change the world more rapidly and more drastically than in the past. So it really accelerates by thinking ahead. And uh, what is, uh, hopefully in maritime traffic, what is striking me that there is material on Earth and then over, I don't know, millions of years, there is coming up a brain and this brain tries to think about and make models about the whole <laughs> universe looking up to the Big Bang. This is really strange. So, to my understanding, uh, we, couldn't only be, we could not be the only one because this same development could be on any other planet or whatsoever. Hopefully, it will turn out for the good. And now I'd like to thank you for spending your intelligence uh, for listening. And I do hope that you may apply for a great future. And hopefully not without Corona. Thank you very much. These are my details if you want to write me a mail. Thanks a lot.